Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining me. This is my 2024 Tesla Model Y long range. I want to talk about Tesla charging. When you go onto the Tesla website and you order a car, there is a, a disclaimer that says the home charging equipment is not included. So Tesla is now giving you an option. You can buy the universal wall connector or you can buy the mobile connector. And I want to point out the other option that you have. Now the Tesla universal wall connector only came out about seven months ago, like late 2023. It's a universal wall connector that uh, wire into your wall. It's kind of hardwired. And then it can charge both Teslas with the NACS plug and it has the J1772 adapter on it, like a magic dock, like some superchargers have where you can charge all other non Tesla cars on it. So it's good if you have multiple cars, like let's say you have a, a non-Tesla and you want to be able to charge that with, with the, the universal wall connector. Tesla is now including that as one of the two options for home charging equipment, where as of just a few months ago, that wasn't the case. A few months ago and in, and in prior months, Tesla would offer the mobile connector and the just wall connector, not the universal one. This universal one is a little more expensive. It's almost $130 more than the regular wall connector. And the only reason you would need to have this universal wall connector and pay the extra $130 for that is if you have a non-Tesla car. Let's say you've got like a, you know, a Chevy Bolt or you got a, a Lucid or a Rivian or some kind of non-Tesla EV. They use that J1772 plug for level two kind of home charging and you could use that. So you really don't need to have the universal wall connector if you're only going to have a Tesla in your garage. The regular wall connector, which is $130 less, is still available and is probably what I would recommend if you're looking at a like hardwired solution in your garage because if you just have a Tesla, that, that will charge that just fine. This is the wall connector, and then this is the mobile connector. The mobile connector is $250. This is $450. I don't have the universal one, but that one's $580. And that's what Tesla, so the, the options that Tesla is giving you right now when you're ordering a car is this, the mobile connector at $250, or the universal one at $580. I think that this would be a better option. If you're buying a Tesla, obviously you need to charge a Tesla. This, into, this includes the, the Tesla plug you may not even need to have the ability to use the J1772 plug if you don't have another e a non-Tesla EV. So really there's three options. There's this, there's this, and then there's the universal one, which I don't have a sample of, but uh, we'll just pretend it's right there. This is, this is probably more than sufficient for most, most people and their charging needs. This is called the mobile connector. It's called mobile because it, it's not hardwired. It just, pl it just plugs into an outlet. It comes with two different plugs. These plugs will just, they just slot into this little box here and you can plug, you can actually charge your car on a regular household outlet. This is just a 15 amp, 110 volt outlet here. This one is the NEMA 1450 plug and it would, it would be a 240 volt at, you know, you'd probably just wire a 50 amp outlet. Now this charger, probably the, the, the downside to this charger is that it only charges at 32 amps. Okay, to give you an example here, this is a NEMA 1450 plug. So if you're getting, you're getting your Tesla, you want to have an electri electrician come out and wire a NEMA 1450 plug so that you can use this mobile connector. So this is 250 bucks. When I got my car, this was about $300 for an electrician to wire this. My electrical room is just behind this wall and then down kind of my basement. So it's not a huge, a really long run. This type of plug uses normally like a, a, like a Romex 6.3 wire. And that wire can be expensive. So if you have like a really long run from your electrical panel all the way to where you want to charge the car, it could be significantly more than that, you know, thousand dollars or more to, to wire this plug. This plug here is, is wired on a 50 amp outlet. And so when you have an electrician come wire this, normally they'll probably put this on a 50 amp outlet. It can only go, this, this charger is only capable of charging at 32 amps. So Really, you could even you could even set this up on a 40 amp breaker and be fine. Because really, you can really you're only charging at 80 percent of the breaker rating. So a 50 amp breaker, you can charge at 40. But this this won't charge at 40. This will only go at 32 uh, amps. And what that what that translates into charging speeds? Let me show you. So I'm going to plug this in here. So with this, if you if this is your charging setup, you can buy a little hook or something to hang this on. Uh, but you just would plug this into your car every night and you, you're charging your car. So let me go inside the car. I'm going to show you how fast this charges the car at 32 amps. If your car's asleep, you can just hold down the button on the handle and it will open the 
charge port here. If the car's awake, you can just touch on this and it'll open it up. When you got a white, when you have the white light, you can insert and then it turns blue, it's kind of blue communicating, and then it'll start, when it flashes green, it means it's, it's starting to charge here. All right, we're in the car. I have it at full amperage here. So if you see here on my charging screen, you can charge all the way up to 32 amps is the maximum charge. I can do it less, but you can see how it says max of 32. But what that gives me, 29 miles in an hour of range at 32 amps, 240 volts there. So that's the kind of charging speed that you can expect from that. If you need faster charging speeds than that, then you can opt for the wall connector, which is gonna charge faster if you have it on a larger breaker. 30 miles in an hour. So let's say you drive 150 miles a day and you wanna charge back up. It's only gonna take about five hours with this overnight, which, you know, so you could you could easily be driving 200 miles a day, and this be this be very sufficient for your needs when it comes to, to, to home charging use. It's portable. Like when you're going on a road trip, it, you can just bundle this up, take it with you, put it in the trunk. So that way, if you're going to stay at someone's house, or just in case on the road you ever need to plug in somewhere, like if you get stranded, you're staying at you're staying at someone's house, you're staying at an Airbnb or something, you can just you can plug your car into the a regular household outlet. If the garage has the 240, you can plug into that. So it does allow you to have that little kind of a safety net when you're traveling. So I always recommend having this. It's just if you want to buy the wall connector additionally is what you need to consider. Okay, so the wall connector, this one's $450. If you're interested in having something mounted on the wall, buy this one. You have to go into the Tesla uh, website under shop and then under chargers to find this one. They used to offer this like right when you bought your car, it was $450. Now they're trying to get you to buy the more expensive one at $580. So I don't think you need the universal one unless you have a non-Tesla to charge. That that charger will also do like two-way charging if you have a Cybertruck. It's only available for Cybertruck right now. This and the universal one both charge at the same speed, so they're not gonna, this one's not faster than the other. I have two of these in my garage. You can, you can wire these up to a 60 amp uh, breaker and then they can charge at 48 amps. And at 48 amps, you'll get almost 44 miles of range in one hour. So almost another 14 miles of range per hour. So if you're driving 300 miles a day and you want it to charge, you know, you want your car to charge up a lot quicker, then this might be a solution. I like the wall connector because I think it looks, I, mainly for the looks of it. I think it looks kind of sleek. It's nice design. It looks good on the wall. So the, like the mobile connector is $250. This is $450. This is gonna be a $200 more option when it comes to charging the car. But you can see you can get these these uh, face plates that are matching. I have the, this this car here is Midnight Silver Metallic. So my charger kind of matches the car, which so it looks cool. So because I have both, what I normally do is I just keep my mobile connector coiled up in that little bag. I keep it in the back, the back of my car so that way I have it in case I ever need to plug in somewhere. So my recommendation to a new Tesla owner, buy the, buy the mobile connector at 250 bucks, get an electrician to wire you one of these and that's going to be sufficient for your charging. 30 miles in an hour for your car of, ch of charging time. The wall connector you can kind of upgrade to in the future or have that installed in the future if you ever have the need to do that. It's interesting that Tesla is now recommending that you buy the universal wall connector versus the regular wall connector, but it's more expensive. It's almost like they're trying to push in a more expensive product, a more expensive charger on you. And if you don't know the difference, you might think, oh, okay, maybe I need to get this $580 universal charger for my garage. Well, you don't really need that, especially if you don't have a non-Tesla. You don't need to have a universal charger because you're only charging your Tesla. The, the regular wall connector will do that just fine. For, not, for my needs, I'm rarely driving more than 200 miles in one day, and so this, this uh, mobile connector will charge, it will charge the car up just fine. So guys, which should you buy? Should you buy the, the mobile connector, the regular wall connector, or the universal wall connector? Um, I say get at least this. I would recommend that the regular wall connector on your wall, this in your car, so you have charging abilities if you ever need to, as kind of a backup. That's, that's, the, that's the most expensive option, obviously, because it's gonna be 250 plus 450, plus the installation of the wall connector, right? Um, probably gonna be close to $1,000, depending on the electrician, how far you've gotta run the wire. I installed and, and wired my own wall connector when I got it. So if you're interested in how to do it yourself or what's involved in the process so you kind of know what, what, to, what to expect, see the, I'll see the link down below. 
Hopefully this provides you with some basic information on which charger to choose for your specific situation. Go with the mobile connector if in doubt. You can always upgrade to the, to the wall connector in the future. I don't think you need the universal wall connector and Tesla's kind of pushing that. So I wanted to make this video so that you're aware of your options so that you don't buy the universal wall connector and then think like, oh, why did I buy this? I don't, I'm never gonna charge a non-Tesla in my garage. Guys, if you have any more charging tips or recommendations or things that you've done in your garage that's helpful, leave them in the comments down below. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.